It's Tuesday, May 16th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And the video that's going viral around the internet right now is this Boeing 747-400 emergency landing return where the right main fuselage bogey fails on landing on this emergency landing back in Luxembourg. The aircraft was to fly from Luxembourg to Chicago. They were unable to raise the gear on takeoff. They went up and troubleshot the problem. They dumped fuel and about 50 minutes later came back and did this emergency landing. Now, because this video has already been grabbed by the viral press, I can't play it back to you. So you're going to have to go find it on your own. But as we look at a couple of still shots from this video, you can see that the aircraft touches down at a normal rate of descent. And as soon as it touched down, touches down, though it's hard to see with the trees in the background, that right main fuselage bogey fails off of the aircraft. This video was captured by some folks that were taxiing out in a small aircraft. And once the, fu the uh, fire truck went by, they captured the bogey itself bouncing down the runway right there. Now, if we go back and look at a close-up freeze frame of this aircraft just prior to landing, one of these things does not look like the other. And it appears to me that the right main fuselage gear is lower, in a lower position than it normally should be. And or this right main fuselage gear is not correctly tilted for takeoff or landing. And that's one of the things that will prevent you from raising the landing gear in these large Boeing aircraft is if the gear is not tilted correctly or the gear tilt sensors are not sensing a correct tilt to the landing gear, you physically cannot raise the landing gear lever. The gear needs to be tilted on these aircraft in order for the landing gear to fit inside of the wheel wells. So off to Simon Radecki's Aviation Herald, a Cargo Lux Boeing 747-400 registered Lima X-Ray Oscar Charlie Victor. Uh, this aircraft was involved in a previous incident, which we're going to take a look at too, which may very well be related. Performing flight as CV6857 from Luxembourg to Chicago, was climbing out of Luxembourg's runway 06 when the crew stopped the climb at 10,000 feet due to being unable to retract the landing gear. Now, they were probably up at 10,000 feet to do the fuel dumping exercise. More on that in a minute. The aircraft returned to Luxembourg for landing on runway 06 at 1900 local 17Z at about 50 minutes, five zero minutes after departure. Upon touchdown, the right hand center gear wheel bogey separated. The bogey came to a rest in front of the cargo lux hangar. How convenient is that? The aircraft rolled out without further incident and was disabled on the runway. There were no injuries, but the aircraft sustained substantial damage. The airline reported that the aircraft was unable to retract its landing gear. As a result, it was forced to dump fuel for the return to Luxembourg. You, you, you're not, you do not, it's not required that you dump fuel on the Boeing 747 or any of these heavy Boeing aircraft based on the weight and or the landing distance for these runways. I'll show you the technical bulletin that explains this. However, it's always the captain's discretion. And if you fear some kind of a problem with your landing gear, especially a problem that's going to end up like this with a landing gear departing the aircraft, then yeah, the captain may very well want to dump some fuel. But it's not necessarily required just because you're making an overweight landing. On landing, the right body landing gear detached from the aircraft. The aircraft came to a control stop, no injuries, and uh, recovery efforts are underway. So good weather, uh, light and variable winds, a couple of still pictures. There's the bogey flying through the air right there. There's the bogey conveniently located right in front of the Cargo Lux maintenance hangar. Maintenance, uh, they'll be reviewing maintenance records on this. And there's the damage to the aircraft where the bogey departed right there. We're, these two actuators we're looking at are the steering mechanism for the main fuselage landing gear. We'll talk about that in a moment. And it poked a huge hole here. This is not a hole through the fuselage. This is not a hole in the pressurized area. This is a giant fairing for the landing gear. However, that looks like fuselage damage right there. That's going to be a big one to repair. Get some more cat litter. 
Now, I'm a 777 guy. Uh, the Boeing 747 is one of the few Boeing aircraft I've not had the privilege to fly. But all of us that are operating these heavy aircraft should consider this technical uh, publication from Boeing regarding fuel jettison. Overweight landings are safe because of conservatism required in the design of transport category aircraft as per FAR 25, as long as you do a reasonable landing of about 10 feet per second at the maximum design landing weight or six feet per second at the maximum design takeoff weight. It's safe to land overweight without dumping fuel. You can land all the way up to your maximum gross weight if you're careful. And the 747 is the heavyweight contender of them all with a maximum gross weight approaching 900,000 pounds. You're required to do a landing assessment for this emergency. And if you review the landing field length required for this weight, you'll find that at most airports, you've got plenty of runway length to land to make this overweight landing and get the aircraft stopped, depending on the nature of the emergency. But if you have some sort of emergency where you may be suspecting your braking capability, for example, the loss of braking in this landing gear, then you may need to dump fuel to make your landing distance good. Now, for a quick review of Boeing landing gear systems, we go to the good old CBT, the computer-based training program from <laughs> years ago. These are great training um, programs that you get when you get checked out in the aircraft. The Boeing 747 has a nose gear, two wing gear, and two steerable body gear. Because of the extreme weight capability, carrying capability of the 747, you've got to distribute that weight with a well-designed landing gear system for taxiing this aircraft on the ground. In order to get the 747 to turn around within the constraints of a 200 foot wide runway, the body gear needs to be able to steer along with the nose gear of the aircraft, steered by the tiller of the aircraft. You normally steer these aircraft with the rudder pedals, but the rudder pedals alone can only give you about seven degrees of nose wheel steering. Once you get down below 20 knots, 15 or so knots, you can then begin to steer the aircraft with the tiller located on the uh, on right to your left there and get up to 70 degrees of nose wheel steering with the tiller to make those sharp 90 degree turns. And once the nose gear exceeds 20 degrees of angle, then the main body gear begin to start steering to work together with the nose wheel steering. That way you don't scrub all the rubber off of the tires and you can make those tight turns, those 180 turns within the constraints of a 200 foot runway. The landing gear actuator is classic old school Boeing with a up, down and off position of the landing gear and an override lock located right here. The landing gear system is powered by system number one hydraulics, nose gear and body gear steering, wing gear retraction is powered by system number four. Now here's the tilt that I was talking about on the landing gear. In order to fit up in the wheel wells, the landing gear has to be tilted once the weight is lifted off of the landing gear. The wing gear has quite a bit more tilt to it than does the body landing gear. And this is the part that I love about Boeing aircraft that makes landing these aircraft so easy and so smooth. Those, those main landing gear tilted back like this, you could just roll that those lower set of wheels on and then as the as the gear tilts down it just kisses the runway and you can roll these aircraft on very very smoothly but if this gear is not tilted correctly and or the sensors do not the tilt sensors do not correct sense a correct tilt to this gear this landing gear level lever will be physically locked and you cannot raise this lever to raise the landing gear unless you push this lock override. But remember, a down gear is a happy gear, so just leave the gear down and troubleshoot the problem like this crew did and consider whether you want to dump fuel or not. Here's a closer look at that body gear steering. Put your uh, greased plates on the floor here so the wheels can move around without scrubbing the rudder off, rubber off. And here's that classic shot of the Boeing 747 landing gear being lowered on that IMAX film from 1985. And you can see the wing gear and the body gear 
going into position with the proper amount of tilt. But something on this flight doesn't quite look right. And if we do a quick search on the history of this aircraft, we could see it was involved in a previous incident that involved that very same landing gear leg. A quick search here in the Aviation Herald for the same aircraft tail number, Lima X-Ray Oscar Charlie Victor finds that in January 21st of 2010, Back at Luxembourg Aircraft, this very same landing gear tagged this van during a Cat 3B approach into Luxembourg. That means it's very, very foggy and the aircraft and the crew are doing an auto land approach. And this van was in the wrong place at the wrong time, attempting to do maintenance on the runway lights when the right main fuselage bogey hit this van. Now, whether this is related at all to today's incident, we have no idea, but maintenance will be looking closely at this. The driver was in the van when this happened. There were no injuries. So it'll be interesting to see if that previous incident had anything to do with this incident. Were the tilt sensors uh, malfunctioning? prior to takeoff on this landing gear? Is that why they could not get the landing gear to raise in the first place? If we find out more, we'll let you know. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for your support, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.